Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ryan Makes Sense, where we talk about personal finance, investing, and chart analysis. Today, we are going to be looking at stocks that are ready from my master watch list. These are stocks that are going to be very attractive. They are reaching their apex where support meets resistance, and they are ready for a move up or a move down. We want to look at signals, patterns, trends, institutional buying, insider buying to see if we can piece together a narrative which will help you know our investing decision again this is entertainment purposes only only and not um, investment advice all of this is for myself don't copy me i don't know what i'm doing now that we've got that out of the way um, you might be asking yourself well how did these get on the master list i've got several videos detailing systems processes but to just sum it up for you really quick um, what you want to do is go to finviz.com. You want to create a scanner. You then want to save those stocks that appear on a scanner. You then want to run those up against other stocks that you have just to make sure you haven't already charted them out. Once you figure out uh, the stocks that you need to look up, uh, use Thinkorswim, use TradingView, chart those stocks out, look for supports and resistances. Where you see an apex where the support and resistance basically meet, put a date in that spreadsheet so then you can come back to it in the future and try and get in before a potential move up or a potential move down, which is what we're going to do here today. So uh, again, these are going to be reviewed and I'm most likely going to be purchasing a handful of these next week for my Robinhood challenge. So if you're watching this, it is Wednesday and I might have already purchased or I'm going to be purchasing on Thursday or Friday. Without further ado, let's jump right in. I did also want to note that if you do want to see when I purchase, I do post it in my YouTube community forum area. I do list out my purchase, my quantity, my price, and the reasons why I purchased. Maybe insiders bought, institutions bought, uh, it's bouncing off support, it's, you know, it's uh, breaking through resistance, it's on a monthly pattern, weekly pattern, daily pattern. We've got momentum moving, etc. There could be tons of reasons. I usually list out most of my reasons. And I also list out which scanner I found the stock on. So you can go back to my other videos, get that same scanner and look for same stocks that fit that criteria. Also, if you have not already hit the like and subscribe button and let's jump in. So here is my master watch list. Um, there are only thankfully, um, 37 to go through 36 if we're removing headers. Um, so we're going to go about through 36. This is going to be a longer video. Um, there will be another video coming out that basically summarizes all of this stuff. But this is my typical analysis of what I do on a regular basis. And I wanted to give you guys some insight into that. And also um, just discover together uh, what we've got going on. So the first stock is APVO. And I'm on the monthly chart. And what we can see here is normally the times we've been wanting to buy. Um, just looking at this chart appear to be, let me fix um, your guys, what you guys can see so you can see the whole picture. So here we go. So um, APVO, uh, looking at this from a high level, we can see normally we want to buy around the green areas. So if we would have bought here at $355, we could have sold it at $55, okay? Um, and all of the red is, the red cycles are to sell. So let me just make this smaller. So we wanted, we would have wanted to sell up here. We would have wanted to sell right here. And it looks like we're going to want to sell right here, which is around May, 2023. And these green dips are when we would have wanted to buy. So we were going to buy, we would have wanted to buy here. That would have resulted around a 10 X move. There was a reverse split on March 27th, 2020. Um, but the 10x move did happen later that year in November. 
So this is looking good um, in terms of price spikes. And we also have, just wanting to call out, we also have a couple channels. We have this upward channel right here that I'm kind of waving in. And then we also have this downtrend channel that I'm kind of waving in as well. So what I want to see here is, okay, is this company financially okay? Do their books look good? Are insiders or institutions adding? So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our handy dandy Googs and we're going to go to Finviz. And we're just going to see exactly that. APVO. Aptivo Pharmaceuticals, or I'm sorry, Aptivo Therapeutics. All right, let's look at their... So they do have some sales, good for them. They're paying off their debt. Can you guys see everything? It's a little bit small, but you can see. So long. So their debt is 0.25, long-term debt is 0.12. Uh, earnings for the past five years are 40%. That's good. Sales over the past years are 4.2%. That is also good. Institutions own 17.4% of the company and their shares float around 5 million. So basically just doing some quick level math, if we have 5 million shares available and there's 6.8 million in sales, that means the stock should be fairly valued around $1. Um, just throwing that out there. Um, they are profitable. They have a 94.4% profit margin. This company's got it going on based off of this, but let's continue to dig. Um, their total revenue is all over the place. My head's in the way. Let me move my head. So their total revenue right here, 2020 was 4.3, 2021 was 12.29, and the trailing 12 months was 6.78. So quite a big difference there. Operating income is positive, net income positive. Um, going to the balance sheet, they are continuing to add more cash. Total assets is 56 million, total liabilities 17 million. Pretty good ratio right there. Uh, where's their debt? Long term debt went from 20 to now 3.7. Uh, their total debt though is 15.37, uh, much less than 25 last year. So the company looks to be improving. Um, other liabilities did shoot up. So that's the kind of thing we would need to look into their um, financials, their 10Q for to see what their other is listed as. Um, Finviz has a little bit older data, which kind of helps in favor. So um, currently it says institutions own 17.4%, but we can see updated um financials apvo so 17 percent since finviz was last updated but we are getting updated financial filings through fintel and fintel is showing that there's a 19 percent ownership so uh institutions are adding um let's see Money Concepts, started a new position, Two Sigma, FMR, uh, Renaissance Technologies, Cut, um, Bank of Montreal, about 10,000 shares. It's like at $6. Um, Dimension Fund, about 12,705 shares. So this is looking pretty good. Um... It is a little overvalued at the moment, but looking at our spike cycles, we did have a spike here though too. So this went from 194 to 720. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of happens over here. We would want to buy here. And so technically would, we would have wanted to buy around $2.00. And we should be selling around, gosh, May. This is a little bit too speculative. Even though the financials look good, I do not want to portray this person who buys speculative um, companies. This could be really good in the long term, but I want to see how it 
handles this downtrend right here, this down channel. And we're also in this Fibonacci um, cycle as well. So a lot of resistance. If it comes over to here, we're going to hit resistance not only here, 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 and here. Um, so let's just see how this goes. I want to check back in on this probably around this area. So 5-1-2024. I'm going back to my spreadsheet and I'm just going to change this to 5 1 2024. And we're going to remove the color. Perfect. Okay. APVO is off the list. And moving on to AROC, a rock. A, a rock. All right, um, looks like this is breaking out long term. Um, I want to add another resistance to rate right here. And also another resistance right there. So we're trying to break upwards here. Um, let's look at their books really quick. It's oil and gas company. Um, I'm not, I don't like oil and gas. 6% dividend, that's really good. Um, they're not really doing anything with their debt, which is can be detrimental in the future. Earnings this year, next year look good. Uh, sales over the last five years are down 0.6%. Um, that is a little bit of a red flag. Um, you know, looking at the shares flow and the sales, I mean, this is a, this should be less than a $10 stock. Uh, institutions own 83.8% as of then AROC. So 83 and this shows 90, 96, huge, huge, huge jump. And we can kind of see it's on the uptrend, huge jump. Um, they are loving this stock, A Rock. So, all right. So this stock is getting a lot of institutional love. Let's just do some quick math here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So we're gonna do eight twenty one. Nine zero 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 zero. So this is their sales, and we're going to divide it by our shares float one thirty four seven one. The fair value is around six dollars, and they're offering a dividend, and they likely have a ton of debt. Let's look at their debt situation over here. Net income is just growing, uh, gross profit, uh, trailing 12 months. Again, it's not updated, so it's pretty close to last year's. Um, let's look at their cash, low cash, total current assets, 2.5 bill, total liabilities, 1.6 bill, total debt, 1.5 bill. Um, are these in, yep, in millions. So yep, these are billions. So total equity is going down. I don't know. This this stock is going to be hot, but I know long term it's not going to be a good play just because you know their earnings next year is not looking too bright. Insiders are not loading. Insiders are selling. Yeah, the insider sold at $10. He sold a pretty good amount. Um, I don't know. This one has potential. I mean, it, you can see this right. Oh, my head's in the way again. Damn. So right here, you can see a convergence going upward. So this is going to have a little bit more room to run. Um, but I don't see much more room, but it's a good dividend pair. Um, are they actually paying dividends though? They are, they're paying dividends. Um, I can tell in Thinkorswim by these green boxes. Those are dividends. 
Um, you know, it's making a move. Am I going to miss the move? I think so, but just adding another channel here. So we got some support, 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 resistance, resistance. And now we're going to come up and probably test around 13. This looks like a good trade. Um, I'm just going to leave this one highlighted for now, just so we can come back to it. I'm going to make a note. Um, oil stock, um, EPS shrinking, good divvy, and institutions are adding like crazy. Okay. I feel good about that. Um, next one I have, I'm going to skip this one. This is more for my other portfolio. This is Bayer. Um, this is the, it is that drug company, B-A-Y-R-Y. -Y. So this is an OTC stock and I don't think it is offered on Robinhood, but it is coming to a really attractive area in here. So this is more so for myself. I'm actually just going to update. I want to check back on this 5-1-2024. All right. Uh, let's move on to the next one. B-B-S-E-Y. Is this B-B-S-E-Y? Nope. Okay, so this is an OTC stock, so this is not something I want to show you guys. It is probably too speculative. So the next one is BBSI. This one is going to be NASDAQ for sure. BBSI. Barrett Business. Um, yep. Okay. So um, this one is breaking out over a long trend. It is around all-time highs. Let's just check their financials. Does it have much more room to run? Let's find out. Okay, um, so looking here, this is, it's not a billion dollar market cap, so that's, I take that into account when I'm doing um, my aggressive or conservative calculations. So let's do 104 billion divided by 677 million. So it's showing a freaking price of $1,000 a share which is crazy. Um, there's no debt. Earnings past five years, sales past five years have been solid. Yeah, this is going to be a, a probably a good buy. Um, so let's up BBSI. Finviz shows 88% institutional ownership while the most updated filings show 103%. Quite the change. And I think that's probably, I don't know what the 103% um, represents. But, I mean, looking here, these I'm liking this. It's moving nice and steady. This looks like something really safe. I like this. This is something I would feel okay with. Um, so we're going to add this to our... Um, Oh, look at that pattern, though. That's deadly. We're going to add this to our watch list, but check this out. I'm a little skeptical about this. So we've got, oops, support here. And eh, it's not really. It looks it looks like it's a uh, ascending wedge, but it's kind of not. I mean, if we go here. Yeah, that's not going to do it for us. Okay, here we go. That's not really going to do it. So here was an ascending wedge right here. You can see it went up, 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 and then just broke out. And then it does a, uh, not what is it called, a throwback, and then it rises up. I like this. I like this. I like this. So we're going to um, keep this on the contender for Robin Hood. Um, this looks great. Um, Robin Hood worthy. 
And just want to note that you can buy fractional shares. So I can buy $5 of this. I can buy 10, I can buy 20, I can buy $1 of it. So that's one of the good things about Robinhood. Probably only think about Robinhood. That's good. Um, moving down to um, BHE. BHE. Okay, so this one looks like, let me just actually reset everything. Oops. Okay. So at a high level, this is what we can see. My head's not in the way. So we have this, these purple channels. So channel one is this solid purple. Channel two is this dotted purple. Channel three is this orange solid. And then channel four is this dotted purple. So um, looking a little closer, we kind of have a bearish pennant where we have a top right here. My head is in the way. I'm glad I'm catching this. Okay, we have a bearish pennant. It looks like so we have a top, we have a bottom, and it's kind of making a ziggy zag. And it's falling through. Well, now if we chart it like that in our favor, it's looking good. Um, let's look at their financials and see if this is this dip is warranted. Because look at this dip. This is huge. Uh, let's see if this is worth it. So this is BHE. All right, 2.8 billion in sales, low debt, quick ratio is good, meaning they have cash. Based off their financials, they are undervalued. Um, institutions own 99%. They're profitable. Gross margins only 8%. That's pretty low. Um, sales are 34 million. So this seems freakishly undervalued. This is going to be freakishly, like it's going to throw a huge number, I'm pretty sure. So let's do 289 billion. Come on, man. 289 billion. Divided by 3461 million. $83 stock. Um, insiders are selling. Let's just see what it looks like. So this person sold about half of their shares at $28. The stock is currently at so this was November. 28. The stock is currently at 24. So good for you. Um Institutions own 99%. Let's check BHE here. Showing 120%. That's huge. 99 to 120? Am I tripping? No, I'm not. Jeez, look at all this. I've seen a lot more greens than I am reds. Wow, this is all February. The white means uh, there's people adding or subtracting from their position. That is crazy. Um, I like this a lot. Let's look at their daily really quick. This seems like a fairly safe stock as well. This is something I could um, discuss. Ooh, okay, so we have a uh, ascending try, not an ascending. Is it an ascending triangle? No, ascending. Yeah, this is, I think, an ascending triangle. What I showed you before was an ascending wedge. So basically tons of resistance up here and it just finally gives out. But the good thing is there's usually a throwback with these types of patterns. Um, We can see volume looks elevated down here. Can you see? Yes, you can. We had a huge sell off and then we had a huge buy, 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 sell, buy, buy, sell, buy, buy, sell. This is good. Institutions added. Um, let's let's just drill. Let's just drill down really quick. Um, let's look at the weekly pattern on this. So, whoops. You know it. 
this orange support is really strong. You know, if it has, if it's ever fallen under here, it bounces back up. I like, oh, let's look at the weekly on this. So, I mean, that's a pretty large move down. Let's just do another, another trend. So basically what's going to happen, the stock price is going to close at 25.71 for the month. And it's going to continue to trade in this tight range. It is a dividend payer. Let's see what we're looking at here. It is outside the Fibonacci circle, so not much resistance going on. Then we have the low to the high. So my head's in the way again. Basically, we'll see a little chop, and then I think I think we should come back to this in two months. May 2023. I mean, you know what? It's above these levels. I like this. I like this a lot. Margins are low, but I don't think I can complain here. Yeah, I mean, this company just looks so good. Um, they dropped big because their earnings. I guess we can just read their earnings really quick and see what they said. Okay, so they they were up 19% year over year. Gross margin was 9.6. Supply chain premiums 10 million lower than expected. Okay, so they just got bang on there. Another record quarter, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm just going through this. A one-time cost of 800,000 closing one of their sites in California. They got 2.3 million from a legal settlement. Increased demand. Okay, so they're being hit by um, market constraints. Yep. Advanced computing up 56%. Next gen revenue up 36. Their top 10 customers represented 51 of their sales. They're doing some math here without, they're removing supply chain premiums, which I'm indifferent when they want to skew metrics in their favor. Um, They bought 9.4 million worth of stock in 2022. They're gonna buy more stock in 2023 if it goes down. So first quarter guidance, 640 to 680.
per quarter. Okay. Okay. So basically they're expecting Six hundred forty to six hundred eighty million for quarter one. So, given that they're going to be, they're not going to be their sales next year or this year aren't going to be as good as twenty twenty two is what they're saying. And looking at that, um, you know. 986,000 volume. Yeah. So I think the stock is actually going to continue downward. So let's actually put this stock on the back burner. But it's a really good stock. If you're a dividend person and you want to add a good dividend to your stock or your portfolio, this is a decent one. So let's watch this uh, 6 1 2023. Right. Uh, the next one, I'm just, this one, I remember this one, BKD, ticker symbol BKD. So this one looks like it's kind of rounding up. It went from a dollar to nine dollars and now it's back down to three dollars. So this is a good um, support level. It's kind of putting in new higher lows so we got a nice little platform here let me just show you what i'm talking about so we got a little platform here now we're platforming up here so basically it's 147 was the low now our new low is 237 and then maybe it's going to go back up to nine we don't know uh but with this new resistance let's just add that there Looks like we're going to come back and test 465. So this could be a trade. But let's look at the financials really quick. Because if I remember, this one has ugly financials. Be kidding. It is a medical care facility. They make 2.7. They lose 294 million. They have a bit of debt. Gross. Earnings per share past five years, 24%. Sales have been downward. Gross margin, 21%. They are not profitable. Um, so that is interesting. This person just bought 154,000 shares at 309. Their net income is just so bad. Um, so this is looking like a big no, but actually I want to show you something um pretty crazy so bkd what could i be showing you that's really crazy institutions own 114 percent. okay whatever we'll take it for what it is but look at this position by freaking blackrock they loaded up they have 36 million freaking shares and where we see blackrock we'll always see vanguard for some reason what are all the what do all these people know look at all these purchases what the heck man all february a lot of red but a green so it looks like blackrock trimmed here actually renaissance technology owns a ton of stocks here too geez so you know this is just insane how much money is into this stock um in good conscience i can't trade it on my robin hood um that's my robin challenge because it is just too speculative 
Um, but it is making a nice long-term pattern. Um, so take it for what it is. I might have it on my, uh, where's my camera? I might have it on my, um, personal account, but I think this is too speculative for everybody. Even though they're making 2.7 bill. Let me just do some math. 277 bill minus 29450 mil divided by shares outstanding 18190 $13 stock. So $13 stock, but look at their earnings per share this year are going to be ne negative 220%. Next year is 21%. So yeah. A little too little too risky for me. So um They're paying down their debt, but I mean, their net margin or their net income is just horrible and they're not profitable. So maybe next year will be better, but this is one long potential cup and handle. We don't know. Um, so again, not for Robin Hood. I'm going to have to look into this further on my own. I'm just going to uncolor it. Maybe personal long term. Okay. Now let's look at ticker symbol BW. Okay. This one looks like it's it did a throwback and now it's back in the channel. This is a six dollar stock. Let's see what's going on. This is BK or sorry, it's BW. 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 All right, all right. While that loads, so it is a special industry machinery. So they make one hundred thirty-two million. They lose thirteen mil. They have cash. Uh, they're not showing their debt. We're gonna have to check that out. They're almost profitable. A um, lot of good earnings. Sales past five years down 12%, but earnings per share is 15%. Insiders own a bunch. Institutions own a bunch. Shares float is quite, quite low. So let's just do some math here to see where we should be at. I'm just going to shorthand it. 832 minus 13.9 divided by 85.3. Around $9 stock. Uh, let's look at their debt really quick. Look at all those buys. B. Riley Financial is a 10% holder. Okay, net income uh, positive but decreasing. Uh, revenue growing nicely. Cost of revenue growing as well. Gross profit going up, thankfully. Um, what is their gross margin? 21%, okay. Uh, let's look at their cash. 224 million in cash. That's great. Uh, total assets, 913 mil. Total liabilities, 880. Close. That's crazy. Total debt, 372 mil. So that's a little, a little crazy, but this is, uh, this could be, does that say Shaw Capital? Shea Capital. Um, let's just check here. BW. So institutions, 124%, um, all right. Just going on down. Okay, um, good mix here, this is all February. So uh, I like this company just because they're almost profitable. Um, their assets and their liabilities are really close, but there is a lot of buying going on. So that does comfort me. There's a lot of institutional buying going on that is comforting me as well. A lot of people took advantage of that dip to four bucks. So yeah, this looks good. Um, we'll keep this on the watch list. 
Uh, we're going to watch, we're going to want to watch um, a good entry on the daily here. Looks like at bottom, oh man, we missed the dip by a few months. Around 395, now it's up 100%. So um, let's see how it does around this 200 level. Um, yeah, so we'll keep it on, we'll keep it on. Robin Hood worthy for sure. Uh, let's look at C next, which I think is Citigroup. Uh, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Here we go. Oops, C, C++. All right, C is... Looks like it just bounced off the bottom channel. Potential resistance around 59. This is a 10% move, but possibly... Let's just make sure it's not overvalued. I think it pays a dividend, a nice dividend as well. 3.97, that's pretty good. Um, so doing some quick math, they make 74 bill, they have 1.9 bill in a supply. So let's just do 74.41 divided by shares float of 1.93, $38 stock. Uh, but it is in the billions of market cap, so that is something to consider. And let's just see what their ownership percentage is. 80.99, uh, Finviz shows 73. So institutions have been adding this. This is good. Okay. I like this. I like this as a trade on the daily as well. So we'll keep this. This is Robin Hood worthy in my opinion. Next is CC. CC, do you love me? Are you riding? Okay, CC, the Kimmler's company, they pay a dividend as well. Uh, okay, so it looks like we've got channel here, channel here, and channel here. It looks like this is currently in two channels, our downtrend channel here and our slight uptrend channel here. Let's just see what this is actually worth to see if it's worth dabbling in. CC. Oh, it's coming up to that ascending triangle. So a lot of resistance, resistance. It needs a lot of power to break through right here. So uh, let's just do some quick math to just do a high level. Seven zero three billion divided by one hundred forty nine three three or three zero million forty seven dollars stock trading at thirty five and they pay a dividend. That's great. They're profitable. Institutions have been buying earnings per share. Good this year. Good last year. Good next year. Last five years. This is great. This is all. This is uh, we're going to see a nice power move here. Yes, good power move. We do like this. I don't even need to look. Let's just look. Let's just look. Let's just see. Showing 81.94%. This is showing 76. Yeah. So updated filing show this is in demand. Can't wait for this one. I This is exciting. This is something I'd buy Monday for sure. Um, let me just make a note here. Robin Hood worthy. Yeah, let's just. Would buy Monday for sure. Okay. Uh, let's look at CB, CFBK. CFBK. And let me just. Okay. CFBK, CF Bank shares, no dividend. That is good. Normally they do offer dividends, banks do. So let's go here, CFBK. It is a bank, correct. Okay, so 67 mil in sales, 1 million shares float. I'm not a mathematician, but that seems screaming undervalued, little debt. 
This is showing right here, very undervalued. Earnings per share past five years strong, sales strong, institutions selling, insiders buying. What are insiders buying? Uh, the CEO bought at $20 and $21. It's $20 right now. That's good. Um, very, there's like no volume here. So if you did buy this one, this would be something you'd want to hold on to for longer term. And, you know, looking at this trend, it looks like uh, we could see some support right here. So uh, let's just confirm CFBK, 42% ownership, CFBK, 25% ownership. That is a huge drop. That is a huge drop. So we're going to, um, we're not going to invest or like this one. We're just going to, let's check back in at 6 2023 How about that? Six one twenty twenty three, and let's take the color out of this one. All right, uh, almost done. Not really, but uh, let's look at the next one. I'm not even. Let's just copy it. All right, this is in a tight range. Can you guys see it? Yes, okay. $30 stock, is it really a $30 stock? Let's find out. Um, 49 billion in sales, 12 million shares float. Good Lord, 6% dividend, but are they paying a dividend? I didn't really notice. They're not paying a dividend, it looks like. Nope, they're not paying dividends. Okay, so um, while we're down here, ooh, look at those margins. They're paying 47 billion to make 49 billion. That's a little sketch. Um, I mean, directors buying $150,000 worth at 25. Let's look at institutions. So this says institutions own 10%. Um, I mean, as a no brainer, this is like, I mean, as math, if I do math, this is a no brainer, but yeah, this is not showing, um, not showing. Huntington Bank owns 56000 share, $56,000 worth. Um, looks like this, they added here. This company added, this company added, and this ETF sold a little bit. Uh, what do I make of this? I don't know. Um, gosh, low volume. I mean, they're making it work with their uh, gross margins of 5%. Jeez. Um, you know what? Nobody else is really investing in it. They're building a new grain shuttle factory in South Dakota. It's going to cost them money. Looking at this chart, you know... If there's going to be more downside, it's going to come down to 28 or 27. We have some resistance here. I think I want to check back in on this stock next month. 4 1 2023. Let's see how, yeah. 4 1 2023. And let's remove the color. Okay. So uh, next one is CLSK. Um, it's three dollar thirty eight stock. But is it really though? Um, okay, looking at their financials. Uh, they're paying their debt off. That is good. They make 131 mil. They lose 40 mil. 
sales past five years, huge earnings per share past five years, huge shares float low institutions are buying insiders are buying gross margins, huge profit margin, almost there, literally almost there. Uh, let's just do some quick math. Let's do the 131 mil, 131.5 plus their income, which happens to be negative 0.4. So 91 after all that divided by the 40.97. This is a $2.22 stock, but they're almost profitable. $2.22 stock right now is $3.38. Um, I mean, look at this volume. Can you see it? Yes. Right here. Huge. This is big. 84 million shares traded last month. 60 million this month, and we're only halfway through. This is a Monday buy. This is a Monday buy. CLSK. Uh... Finviz shows that institutions own 30% of this company. Fintel says 35%. Look at this over here too. I got to move the screen. Look at that. Huge. This is big. This is big. This is big, everybody. Uh, let's see who's buying. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? Uh... BlackRock owns a bunch. Belvedere Trading's hopping on. Harvest Portfolios. If BlackRock owns, Vanguard owns. That's always a given. Where's Vanguard? Vanguard owns 2.8 million shares. They trimmed a little bit. They have a bunch of funds with it. Ain't that funny? Ain't that funny? Okay, uh, Clean Spark. I like this a lot. I like this a lot for my personal and for my Robin Hood. This is a yes. This is a yes. This is a yes. Beautiful. Okay, I really like that. I'm excited for that one. Uh, moving down to CMC. Oh my goodness gracious. We missed the boat on this one, guys. Uh, $10 stock went to $58. Um, let's... Man, I had to chart it out and everything. Let's... Uh, let's look. CMC... How much upside do you got? Steel. Steel has usually good. That's good gross margins. Okay. Um, so quick math. They make 916 billion. They have 115, 87 million shares available. $79 stock. Okay. This has a lot of room to run. Um, insiders are selling. Yep, the CEO selling a lot. And let's check institutions, CMC. Uh, there was 87% holding. Now there are 101, a lot more buying. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, there is upside. They have cash. Low debt. Earnings per share fast last five years and sales last five years really good. It looks like earnings per share next year, which is going to be this year, down 25%. So this one has already took off and left us. Um, I'll just keep it on the list of potentials just because there's a lot of upside still. I think from 60 is a good 10% gain. I would, um, I'll keep it. I'll keep it like that. Um, I'm going to unhighlight this one. And I'm going to unhighlight this one just to make it easier for myself. Okay. Um, yeah, so CMC, 
you know, it's going to be a good one to trade, like, on the week, on the daily. We can watch that one on the daily. Um, but let's go to CMT now. CMT. Ooh. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at this dominant move. You guys, it said lift off at $14. Okay, let's see what this is. CMT. Core Molding Technologies. Specialty Chemicals. Good loud. Okay. Um, let's just do some quick math math. 364.1. So that's our sales. And we're going to do divided by 7.58 million shares available. $48 stock currently at 16. Paying off their debt. They're profitable. Gross margins at 13%. That's fine. Uh, institutions are adding. Insiders are adding. Let's just see. CMT or dynamite. Okay. 61%. Oh my god, Finviz shows 46. This is a this is a Monday buy. This is the Monday buy. Uh net income going up from last year. Insiders bought around 10, 11, 13. Good chunks, decent, respectable chunks. Uh David Duval, is he like is he swing trading the stock? He sold a bunch at $10, but then he bought at $13. Whatever. Um, revenue is going up. Uh, gross profits going up as well. They have $6 million in cash. Not that great. Assets, $186. Liabilities, $86. So that's a good, good ratio there. This is a Monday. This is a, this is a, yeah, this is a good one for me. Yep. Um, great. Next one is Coty. I own Coty in my um, M1 Finance. Whoops. Sorry about that. Okay, back to Coty. Coty, Coty. All right, Coty. I think this is makeup. Beautiful. Um, let's just see what this is worth. Because this could be worth trading uh, intraday. Not intraday. Don't ever trade intraday unless you have a lot of time uh, or patience. Coty. Okay, it's household products. Um, let's just do some quick math. Oof. They, their quick ratio is super low. Uh, they're paying off their debt, but let's just do some quick math. Five billion... 27 million divided by 349 million. Shit, shit. Oh, pardon my language. Five to seven billion. Look at that income. They have 120, okay, 123 million in income. I'm not really going to add that. Divided by 349, 20 million. $15 stock. $15 stock, okay, it's 11 but it's also breaking up. So breaking upwards, it's breaking to a positive. Um, I like this. I like this. I do, I do, I do. Um, what's their debt situation? Wow, director bought a ton at seven. Uh, net income is dwindling, kind of. Uh, revenue is just going up. Wow. The revenue is going up while their cost of revenue went down a little bit. That means their um, their products are sticking. People like them. Uh, cash, 233 million. Total assets, 12 bill. Total liabilities, 8 bill. This could be, they could pay a dividend. Do they pay a dividend? No, they don't. This is a, this is a good company. We're going to keep this on. This is Robin Hood worthy, but it's not like a screaming buy. In my opinion, uh, let's go on to wait. I do want to see uh, what institutions are holding this at. So it's showing thirty-seven percent here. Institutions forty-three. Okay, yeah, this that might explain why this is just going off the rails in a good way. CPRI. 
All right, can you guys see my screen? Yes, look at that dip. Look at that. People say technical analysis doesn't work. You can see, but look at this. Hit its head here. Oh, my head's in the way. Hit its head here, bounced off here. I love, you gotta love when technical analysis is on point. Uh, let's zoom out again, okay. So this is trading at $50. Is that decent? Let's find out. CPRI. Apparel. That is one of those um, extra expenses as we're going into a recession. So it's a $50 stock. Let's do some quick math here. 5.8, 5, oops, 5.78 bill. Divided by 128, 54 mil, $44 stock. It's a little overvalued. Um, let's see, institutions say 95% ownership. Was that right? Yeah, 95.2. This is showing at nothing. Is there not enough here? There's a ton. Um, it's not showing me the percentage, unfortunately. Base, given that it is apparel, the chart is not bad, but what I think we could see happen is we could see further tests down into here. Let's see how this Fibonacci arc works. So, good support on the outer right here. This just fell through like butter. I think, yeah, we'll check back into this um, right here. 10-1-2023. 20, CPRI, 10-1-2023. And we're going to just remove the coloring here. All right, we're moving on to the next one. C... T G. Ooh, look at this setup. Nice. Okay. Computer test group. Okay, I remember this company, I think. So I have uh these brackets. We'd want to sell here. We would have wanted to sell here, and we're gonna want to sell here. So what I think I see happening is here we have this long-term resistance. We see a spike up, maybe to like right here, and it comes back down. So this is a $7 stock. Let's see if it's really worth the $7 that it's showing. All right, so they do 359 mil in sales. Here's my calculator. So 359.6 in sales divided by outstanding 13.94. $25 stock, hey, that's what I just said, $25 um no debt great quick ratio good they have some cash earnings per share this year next year good 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 institutions own 53 percent. i want to see that go up ctg be more than 53 percent. 62 wow okay um that's good that means institutions are buying they're profitable gross margins 23 percent I mean, it's not like hyper growth, but it's good. Revenue down. Cost of revenue down also, though. So net income up. That's kind of cool. 35 mil cash. Total assets, 188 mil. Total liability is 93. So about two to one uh, ratio there. Total debt is zero, but they have liabilities of 27 mil. So if I was really interested, I could go in and read what they have for other liabilities. Um, maybe it's, they just bought a bunch of touch screens. I don't know. So this is a Monday buy for sure. Robin Hood worthy Monday would buy. So that's CTG. And my previous note was good for scalps to long with long-term resistance test around $13. Good to note. Uh, I do want to keep that note. Awesome. CTG. Awesome. That is exciting. We have some really good looking companies, you guys. 
Next up is DAC, D-A-C. Danaos, Danaos, sounds like a shipping. $59 stock, they do offer dividend. Up, oh, yep, it is shipping, okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of shipping companies because they can be a little bit manipulate but we'll, we'll we'll get we'll we'll get to that determination soon so they do 955 million in sales there's 10 million shares outstanding so this should be a 95 dollars stock if my math is right let's just see 955.9 divided by 10.82 88 dollars stock currently trading at 59 but they do offer a dividend um this is showing very undervalued. You can see me circling. Earnings per share really high. Next year, negative. Uh, past five years has been 25%. Sales have been 6% good. Gross margins, profit margins are profitable. Institutions own 21% with big sellout. Um, let's just see what the insiders are buying like. We don't see that. Okay. So if we want to see... So typically what we'll see is if... Um, insiders buy from foreign countries outside of the u.s you have to go into their actual documentation to see how much they own or they purchased um so this one's good this one looks really good really 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 good i kind of want to add this to my m1 finance dividend portfolio actually let's see let's see let's see how this looks so Finviz is showing there was a 21% ownership with 20% sellout. If it's over 21, 63%. Holy moly. That's big, you guys. That is freaking big. Um, You know what? I am going to have to make an executive decision here. I am kind of blown away. Um, let's just see. Are they? Whoops! I did not want to bookmark that. Let's look at control. They're paying dividends. Are they like quarterly? Okay, so. They're paying February. They so they I just missed the window on this one, but um I have to make an executive decision here, guys. I'm sorry I'm holding this up, but this is just crazy. Can you guys see my screen? You can, okay. So I'm making an executive decision here. I don't do this often. I don't think I've actually ever done this uh, while filming. So what I'm gonna do, you guys can see my screen. I'm actually going to, uh, I gotta buy this stock right now on my, um, my M1 finance, like, holy cow. Um, oops, there's a duplication going on. Okay, so I'm in one, my M1 finance. If you guys don't know about my M1 finance, uh, I have two basically, uh, I'll just call them indexes one is a dividend investing index and one is just regular so um this is my regular index i'm just kind of thumbing through return low to high so um looking good there so i'm up 323 dollars it's showing a total return of 320 or 33 percent um, but that's not really accurate. So I'm going to go to retirement two. This is my dividend portfolio. 
This one is showing I have $112 in dividends with 6.16 dividend yield. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go, whoops, I'm going to add, um, I've got to add, how do I get to my freaking screen, man, portfolio. I got to add DAC right here, right now. Edit pie, add slice, DAC, yes, okay, done. And we are going to, I'm gonna keep that, whoops. I'm gonna keep these at 3%. Let's bring you to 3% as well. I do need to make a reduction. Which one do I want to turn down on? Let's do BTI. That one's gonna be in a downtrend for a while. And Canon, let's do that. All right. I had to perform an executive there, buddy. So, um, yeah, DAC looks great. Um, do I want to trade it in my Robinhood? Maybe. I'm just going to put Robinhood worthy. Um, yeah. I mean, is it? I mean, it is pretty appealing. That's a great candle here too, by the way. Yeah, I think, let's go back to, um, yeah. Excuse me. So it does quarterly dividends. I like this, you guys, I really like this. Last month they did 2.5 million in volume. This month, 2.6 million in volume. Okay, this is a Monday, potential Monday buy. Making that update there, all right. Uh, moving down the list, we are looking at EBS. Ooh, look at that. Okay, that's a nice little hook sinker. Okay, EBS. Um, let's see if they are making money. One point five bill. What am I missing here? What are we missing? They have a little debt. They have a ton of cash. It looks like. Let's do some math here. What's going on? Okay. One five one bill divided by forty four eight one mil. Thirty three dollars stock. Earnings per share next year high. Earnings per share the past five years has been good. Sales have been good. Gross margins high. They're profitable. Institutions I've been selling. Insiders I've been selling. No buying, huh? Net income dra dropped drastically. Revenues dropping. Um, balance sheet shows $576 million in cash. Total assets 2.9 bill, total liabilities 1.3 bill. That's good. That's a three, three to one ratio. Total debt 841 mil. That's nothing. If they're that's half of what they make in a year. Um let's see EBS. So Finviz had 84.6% ownership, and now it's it is uh 103. So Demand is still high. Vanguard and BlackRock are holding strong. I mean, this this seems like a good buy. Like, look at these levels. They have little debt in the big grand scheme of things. This is like, they were last around here around 2013. This is crazy, right? Um, so it's going to be really volatile. So yeah, I just dropped from 
there to there. So I would DCA into this one in my Robinhood account, I think. Uh, maybe in a, I'll put Robinhood worthy. I don't know if I would DCA into it. So I'm just going to uh, put Robinhood worthy here. Uh, next, EBTC. What is this all about? EBTC. All right. Um, it looks like it is really respecting the Fibonacci arc. Um, Evertech. It's kind of in an ascending wedge here. Broke up, back down. Let's just check. EVTC, what's it all about? Evertech. Software infrastructure, very nice. Um, 611 million in sales, around 64 million shares flow. It's about a $10 stock. They offer a dividend, they have cash. They're growing well, high gross margins, very profitable. Any insider buys? Only insider sells, oh my gosh. Back in 38, it's 35 right now. Uh, let's look at the institutional EVTC. Let's see what they've got going on. 120%, okay. Look at that. I'm breaking out to new all time highs. Um, Vanguard and BlackRock, the buddies. Okay, so let's 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 go back and take a peek. So in terms of patterns, this has held up really well since 2017. This bottom, the support that I'm kind of highlighting right now. We're hitting resistance here. Um, this has been a long-term resistance. It's busting its head. So last month's volume was 6 million. This month's 4.6. So we're about to break break that. Um, one, two, three, two. So I think we can wait. We can afford to wait on this one. Um, let's wait until we get right here, 7 one 2023 Looks like a good amount of um, resistance was there anyway. So removing some color and let's do EZPW. Now this one looks good. Look at this huge long channel that's been around since 1993, every time the stock has fallen out of it, bounces back up. Currently in an upward pattern. I think there we could hit support one more time for sure. Let's uh let's see how much this stock is really worth. Easy court. What's easy about it? Credit services. Ooh, consumers are at like almost a trillion in credit card debt, which is crazy. Um, okay, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? There it is. Somewhere in here. Okay. Uh, 929 mil they make. 51. So this is like a $20 stock, maybe? Let's see. 929 divided by 51. $18 stock. Okay. Their debt, they're not really touching. They have quick ratio of 3.6, meaning they have some cash. Earnings this year and next year are positive. Next five years, you can't really guide out five years. Uh, earnings per share past five years has been around point, negative 0.1%. Sales have been positive 3.5%. They're profitable, high gross margin, that's great. Institutions own 95%. Let's just see. 95%, we wanna see that higher? 115, okay. 115 um insiders what are insiders doing uh just declaring options revenue up gross profit moving up slowly net income's growing balance sheet 206 mil they have 1.3 bill in assets 655 bill in liabilities 
I like this company. Um, but we, we, I think we can see, um, I think we can see come back down to eights, the eights for sure. So we're going to have this one as Robin Hood worthy for sure. FMX is the next one. FMX, FMX. All right. It has broken upward and onward. Okay. Let's take a peek. It is a foreign stock. Mexico. Um, did they get bought out or anything? Share buyback. Awesome. Okay. So doing some quick math here. 3403 billion in sales. Very nice. Divided by 354, 24 mil. $96 stock. They have a 1%, 1 percent, 1.7 1.78% dividend. They're paying off their debt. Earnings per share the past five years has been great. Sales have been great for the past five years. Um, gross margins, 37%. They're profitable. Um, again, this is $97 stock. Now it's around 94. Let's see FMX here. Institutions did own around 37. No, no, no. Yep, 37%. Now it is 0.77. Let's see. It looks like it's pretty low. Ooh, Invesco sold a bunch. Invesco went from 115 million shares down to 6 million. Ouch. Ouch. So, yeah, let's see. Last month there was 11 mil involved. This month there's 12.27. Just straight up rocket ship from the last few months. Jeez Louise. Um,. Yeah, I mean, it's clearly on a breakout. We're going to see some resistance around here for sure. Let's just draw a quick uh, right here. So if this goes from 95 to 100, that's about a 5% move. Man. Institutions sold out like crazy. Um, let's look at the website really quick. I I don't know if they sell alcohol or what. Coca Cola, okay. So they sell a bunch of different beverages. Um. Man, it just ripped. It just ripped. Look at this volume right here. Just ripped. Ripped. Crazy. Um, yeah, I mean, I really want to. This can this what do the dailies look like? This this is the daily. This could be something worth trading on the day. Ah, you know what? Let's. I'm going to leave it for myself, but in terms of a Robin Hood, it's already ran too much. I don't really want to, I don't want to have that. So let's, uh, let's look at FNMAH. Is this a FNMAH? Is this OTC? Yeah, it's OTC. We're going to skip this one because I don't think Robin Hood deals with OTC. Uh, we're going to look at free. All right, free has not been around. Whole Earth Brands. Ouch, F-R-E-E. -E. And let's look here, F-R-E-E. -E. So, 
They make 533, $532 million, $34 million shares outstanding. That's around, should be over 10 bucks. but their debt, they could have some debt. Um, they're, they might be profitable. Yeah, they're barely profitable. Uh, institutions own 69% here, but updated, they own 77. Okay. Um, revenue's growing nicely. Wow. Oh, yeah. Gross profits go down a little bit. Um, net income positive. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. Balance sheet cash, 28 mil cash. Total assets, 922 mil. Total liability, 608 mil. Man, their debt just doubled though. That's, it's a little crazy. Their debt doubled. Institutions like this. I mean, let's, let's, this is, yeah, let's just do some quick math here. 532 mil in sales. We're going to minus their debt, which I think was... 300, where'd their debt go? Total debt, 387. So let's remove their debt. Minus 387.23, 144. So 144 mil divided by shares outstanding of 34.41. This is a $4 stock trading at $3. 30 cents um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this to Robin Hood worthy I think this is definitely worthy um, did I look at 69% this is showing 77 yep that's great uh, next let's let's look at FRGI FRGI I've been watching this one for years I've been waiting for this bad boy or girl. So um, these are the areas to buy the dip. And usually selling the rip is around a few years later. Um, so what we're seeing here is kind of a breakout. I think we could probably see a little, you can see a little whoop, and then maybe a um, throwback. Uh, but this is trading at 835. Let's go check it on uh, Finviz. Uh, so bust out the calculator, 379 minus 17.4 divided by 24.7, $14 stock. And it's at nine, it's at 835. Uh, no long-term debt. Good. They have some cash. Good. Earnings per share this year is going to be really good. This was from last year. Um, let's look at institutional ownership. It's at 87. It was at 87. Now we want to see a little higher, maybe. Um, 89, so not bad. Uh, improvement there. Gross margin, 68%. Almost profitable. My head's right in the way. Whoa, I just hit a button. Just hit a button. Let me move my head, that's what I want to do. So um, right here is their profit margin. So they're not profitable yet, but they just paid off their debt. So let's just go down and take a peek. Um, no insiders buying. So we can see revenues growing, gross profit is growing, operating growing, or I'm sorry, operating expenses are growing, which is not good. Uh, net income is negative. Balance sheet, short term, cash short term investments, 36 mil. Total assets, 367 mil. Total liabilities, 212 mil. Uh, total debts down to 0.5, which is great. So this is good. I like this. This is going to be a Robin Hood worthy. It's not really telling me like buy on Monday. So um, yeah, this is good. Good, good little gains there.
GNRC. Is that Generac? GNRC. Generac. Okay. Um, yeah, looks like it just rallied over a thousand percent. This is a 10 bag. I do want to note that. Yes. I do want to study that in the future. Whoops. I put Three. Apologies, apologies. Um, so Generac, GNRC, let's see what's going on. Went from 500 to 100, or 85 actually. So um, looking at this, let's just do some quick maths on it. 4.58 billion divided by 61, 63 million. $74 stock, but we also have uh, market cap. So we can also add uh, plus 81.2. So basically it's a 10. If it's a market cap over a billion, you can add it to the um, forecast so this puts the stock around 155 um, analysts have it at 149 so that's interesting we're pretty close there um, honestly nothing really too exciting about this company it's trading around value um, a lot of the CEO goodness gracious has been selling quite a bit around the 110 range. 102, yeah. Wow, sold a ton of wow. So, yeah, we we're going to put we're going to we're going to skip this one and we're going to look back at this one um right here 912023. All right, next one is Go, G-O. All right, ooh, it's it fell out of this top Fibonacci arc, but it's also within this Fibonacci arc, but it's also on this support. And my head is blocking everything. So um, grocery outlet, this looks like a decent area to get in, honestly, just because if we're looking, this is the upper range, this is the lower range, and this is kind of in the middle range. But let's actually just do some quick calculations to see if it's um, worth looking at. All right, grocery outlet. Let's do some quick math here. They make 3.43 billion and they have 88.8 .8 million. Oh, I have to type it out long. 8883. $38 stock. Um, it's at 29. Analysts have it at 38. Crazy. And here's the analysts. Um, so I agree. I mean, this is a $38 stock. Earnings are consistent uh gonna be 13 percent this year past five years has been 40 percent. sales have been 11 percent. insiders have been selling like crazy institutions <laughs> institutions are at 141 percent. sorry guys my mic was away from me um holy moly whoops i just exited something So Grocery Outlet is a $38 stock trading at $29. Um, I think this is adding to the Robinhood worthy. We can definitely trade this on the daily. Um, you know, we want to wait for earnings to go through. Um, so let's let's put this as Robinhood worthy. We'll add it to our Robinhood app. Yes. All right. Uh, next one is HBM. HBM. Let me fix my. There we go. All 
All right, HBM. What is this? HBM Hud Bay Minerals. Okay. Not familiar, but that is okay. Um, HBM. HBM. All right. Um, 2.1 billion in sales, $261 million shares outstanding. I'm thinking this is around a $10 stock. Divided by 26163. $8 stock trading at $5. Earnings are going to be good this year. Uh, earnings past five years have not been good. Sales have been positive. Uh, gross margin 21%. They are profitable. Um, institutions own 67%. And the most updated numbers we have, 72. So positive addition there. Um, paying down debts. I mean, this is a, tr this is trade worthy. Um, I could put it on the Robin hood, but I, yeah, it's Canadian companies. They don't post their data down there. Um, I mean, Let's just see. Let's see. It's been trading like very flat. So we're actually not going to have this. We're going to revisit this in a few months. Let's do eight one. Just because it fell below the um, 50 SMA. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So this bright orange, it's the 50 SMA and it fell through it here on the monthly while well, the monthly candle is still being created but um it looks like it's gonna fall through that with the 20 sma also bringing downward pressure as well so yeah we're we, we got that one for august of 2023 uh next one is hsii All right, head hydric and struggles. Okay, bounced off of this channel recently, or support. I'm sorry. H C I I. Oops. H. -C -I -I. What was the ticker symbol? H S I I. Okay. Okay. So. The stock is $31. Looks very undervalued just looking at this. So 1.19 bill 1.13 billion divided by 19.54 million. $57 stock trading at 31. Uh no debt, great quick ratio good. They have cash. Um, sales positive in the past five years, earnings per share positive in the last five years. Um, no insider buying. Let's see. They're selling. Um, let's check here. HSI. So Finviz is showing that institutions of 92.6. I like this company. I think I want to see, um, this candle the monthly candle and the next month's candle but let's see they're showing 107 that's a a big difference from 96 92 so i like this um we're probably going to see more downward pressure here coming through with the 20 going under um so last time the 20 came down this popped up so yeah let's this is robin hood worthy We're going to keep it. And the next one we're looking at is, let's go to HSON. Okay. 
We're looking at Hudson <clears throat> Global coming down to test the support, it looks like. Um, stock is at 26, and looking at this, it looks like the stock is undervalued. 206 million in sales. There's only 2 million, 2.5 million shares available. Insiders have been loading the boat. Oh my gosh, look at all these ads. That's a lot of, that's all the CEO adding. Um, yeah, revenue is going up very nicely. Net income's going up. This feels like a Monday buy. Total assets 61 mil, total liabilities 21 mil. Um, this looks really good, you guys. This looks really good. Um, showing 73% ownership. Finviz shows 55. That's huge. So, yeah, this looks good. I like this one. We're going to add this one to um, Robin Hood. I kind of want to make it would buy Monday. Yes. I wouldn't really buy it Monday, though, because it looks I just want to see the candles play out. We'll do that. We'll just put we'll put would buy Monday, but we're not going to make that purchase. Um, so Humana H-U-M. This one's a ripper, so it's at $510. H-U-M, and let's look at institutional ownership, H-U-M. All right. Um, let's, we're going to have to do some math here. Math, math, math. Okay, so 92.87 billion. 92 plus 2.81 billion plus... Two eight one billion. Yeah. Divide. We're not even looking at market cap here, and I think we should. <clears throat> um. Plus, or I'm sorry, divided by one twenty four seven one zero. Seven hundred sixty seven dollars stock at five hundred ten dollars. Kind of seems like a no brainer here. Uh, we're at ninety six percent ownership. Old data, 109 new data. This is Robinhood worthy, would by Monday. JCTCF. JCTCF, perfect, okay. I just wanted to make sure it was a uh, non-OTC. Uh, so this one has fallen through, let's... Uh, this is a $5.70 stock. Is that um, suitable? Let's see. Let's do some math. Let's do some math. Okay, so 62 million in sales, 1 million, almost 2 million shares float. So about a $30 stock based off that. No long-term debt. Earnings guide, they, they're not doing any guidance. Um, insiders picked up more, but that could be from... Stock-based compensation. Institutions own 17%. Let's see. JCDC. Um, what's going on down here? So this person sold $108,000 worth. Uh, revenue is going down. Operating expenses are also slightly going down. Net income is going up a little bit. Not that much cash. Total assets, 34. Total liabilities, 10.4. So about a 3x, 3 to 1 ratio. Not much data here. Not much data here. So we're going to have to make a determination on this one based off the chart and... Based what I'm seeing here, it broke a key support. Like, it's been support since 2009. It broke that. So let's see if we can guesstimate where we think the price is going to go. So we can go up here and we know. Let's say this was the all-time low for this. I mean, that would make sense. 
But what if it goes lower over here? Like, what if it goes to this? I chose this because if we look, it's respecting here, it's respecting here, respecting support and as resistance, showing as support resistance-ish right there. Let's come back here, 8-1-2023, yeah. All right, J-E-L-D is the next ticker. J-E-L-D, let's see. Jeldwin Holdings. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> it's like, boom, hit its head, and it's like, nope. Um, so this is a $12 stock. Is it worth a $12 stock? Let's see. Jeld and Jeld. All right, let's see. Um, five billion cells, 83 million shares float. It sounds uh, un undervalued. Um, okay, my head's not really in the way. So they have some cash. They have quite a bit of debt. They're slowly paying off. Uh, they're anticipating earnings being bad this year. Earnings per share the past five years and sales past five years are pretty good. Um, institutional trans institutional ownerships at 97 and now it's at 111 that is good for the stock um let's just go down and see a lot of buying a lot a lot a lot a lot of buying that is really good um Yeah, that's great. Uh, their net income is just getting hammered. Um, not good there. Balance sheet. They have $395 million in cash. Total, ice, total assets, $3.7 bill. Total liabilities, $2.8. Total debt, $1.7 bill. And how much do they make? They make $5 bill a year, so it's manageable. Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I think this is historically low. But I think we're going to see more downside here just because it's a pretty bearish candle right here. Um, I think I'm, I'm not going to put this on the Robinhood list, but I'm going to keep it on my personal list. Uh, all right, let's look at J-O-B. J-O-B, J-O-B. The G group this is a penny stock. J-O-B, whoops, Jobin. What was that from, Jobin? I forget. Um, okay. 165 million in sales, no debt. They have cash. 109 million shares outstanding, so this is around a dollar stock. Um, earnings past five years have been good. Earnings past sales, is, earnings past five years sale. Sales past five years, sorry, has been positive as well. They're profitable. Institutions have been buying. Let's see what's going on here. Let's just um, go down and see what's going on. Uh, net income's positive. Revenues, so it's trailing 12 months, so this is the most 2021 data is the most up to date we're going to get, which is not good because we're about six months in arrears. So let's just see what's going on. 18 mil cash, total assets, 119, total liabilities, 18. So that's about a 10 X difference. Institutions owns 22.5 and the old data showed 32. So big drop off there. So why did this drop so nastily? Let's see. When did it drop so bad? Around December 14. So they dropped because of fourth quarter. So let's see what they guide for 
Okay. So... I'm not seeing any guidance. Uh, so not much really, they're not really, um, 2023, despite the challenges in the headwinds, they're cautious optimistic expect there will be many opportunities for the company to place contract permanent workers. Ah, because of the recession. Okay. 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 Okay
So the next part of this video is basically putting them onto my Robinhood watch list for um, the next upcoming week. Um, so let's go ahead and do that together. All right, guys, so we just reviewed a ton of stocks and now we're going to go ahead and add them to our Robinhood watch list. Um, I have $125 in buying power, which I'm excited for. Um, let's add all those stocks that we just talked about. Um, so those are going to be AROC. Perfect. Uh, let's add it to my first list. BBSI. We're going to add C and CC. C, whoops, dismiss my first list. And then we're going to add CC as well. Oh, we don't have, they don't have CC on, um, there it is. Okay. It's hidden. Okay. So I want to put my, um, the ones that I'm Robin hood worthy would by Monday. I'm going to put those on a separate, uh, watch list actually. So create a new list. Um, by Monday list. So we're going to put CC here. I'm just going to put all the by Mondays in now just to get out of the way. So we had Queen Spark, C L S K. We had CMT. We had CTG. Uh, looks like also the last one, oh, there's two more. There's DAC, oops, DAC. And the last one is HSON. All right, so those are all the ones I would buy Monday, and I'm going to finish up adding um, the other. Let's add. OK, so I'm going to go back and finish adding these bad boys. Um, CMC. So these are going to be the ones that I want to chart out on the daily and then kind of catch a ride, a wave on the swing. Um, so CMC, Coty. All right, and then EBS, that's the biotech one that looked pretty good. Um, come on, EBS. Uh, okay, EZPW. Then there is free. And Fiesta Restaurant Group. Go. Grocery outlet. And a couple more. HSII. And the last one is Humana or Humera. I don't know. Humana. Awesome. So those are the ones that we can catch a wave on, but I'm excited, you guys. I'm so excited um cool so i can do that that's nice and clean so with that guys um you know we had out of all those we had i think six one two six good ones out of 34 so yeah um i appreciate you guys hanging out with me and if you made it this far please consider subscribing to my channel it would help a lot have a great day bye